How you doing, Fairhaven? Thanks for letting me join you again. This is uh, twice now on a Friday I get to join you. Uh, I would just ask another question. We're in this series. Let's talk about it. And here's a question that came through uh, to us. And the question is a simple question on, on the surface, but it's a lot of complex thinking behind it. And the question is this, why doesn't God answer my prayers? Let me start off by reading 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. It says this, And this is the confidence that we have toward him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request that we have asked of him. The reality is when I have asked that question, and maybe you have as well, it's the fact that we haven't gotten the answer that we really wanted to get. That's really the, the issue here. And John in 1 John is talking about the fact that um, he hears everything. Uh, God hears all of our prayers. So I just want to make sure that it's clear that we all can agree together that God always answers prayer. Um, he answers one of three ways. He'll say yes, he'll say no, and here's the hardest one, or he'll say wait, or maybe. And that's really the hardest one. And that really probably is the is behind the question when we say, why doesn't God answer my prayers? So let me just make sure, as First John is talking here, he says that God listens to all of our prayers, regardless of what we ask. He doesn't ignore any of us. If you're uh, with us today and you feel like God is not listening, he is listening, he cares. You are his child if you're a follower of Jesus. Um, Matthew chapter seven is clear that regardless of what we ask, he listens like a child would ask for something that they don't deserve or they don't need. Um, God hears all of that according to Matthew 7. He does not ignore any of his children. Luke chapter 18 tells us that. And when we talk to him, he promises in Matthew chapter 6 and Romans chapter 8 actually, he promises that he will listen and that he will answer. And that's why I mentioned to you that he'll answer yes, he'll answer no, he'll answer maybe. Let me rehearse a couple of those for you. Sometimes he answers yes. In 1 Samuel, Hannah wanted to have a child. She prayed and prayed and prayed, and God heard her prayer. She even anguished in her prayer, and God answered that. And so uh, Hannah's one example that many times uh, God says yes, and he does that because we are his children, and he wants what's best for us. And so the answer is yes always is a, an amazing thing. He also answers no. We actually talked about it on Sunday in John chapter 11 when Jesus seemingly said no to the request of Martha to come and help Lazarus when he was sick. And Mary wondered why he didn't come too. And the answer was no there, but there was a much bigger purpose at play there. And um, we talked about that on Sunday. But no is a hard one to hear. But when you hear no, or if it feels like God is saying no, there is a sense in which you can pause and acknowledge that. I think that's the best way, just to say, Lord, I, you must be saying no. I don't like it. I don't agree with it. I struggle with it. But there has to be a bigger, a better purpose. And in fact, there is. So even in the answer no, God is at work and doing great, great things. As I mentioned, the hardest one is when God says wait. And we see that in Romans chapter 8, um, because he works all things for good. And sometimes in working good, we won't see it in our lifetime. My wife and I have prayed for a long time that God would bring complete 100% healing in one of our sons. And that hasn't happened yet. A lot has happened, but it hasn't happened completely. And so we've been waiting and waiting. And we might wait until eternity. I don't know. But it's in the waiting that we need to remind ourselves that God wants the best for our life. God wants the best for your life. And so if I could tell you anything at all today, um, I would tell you, keep praying. God hears you. He will answer. And he has what's best for you. And that's why in Philippians chapter 4, it says that we ought to abide in prayer. That we ought to keep coming to him in prayer. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And he will respond in whatever way he knows is best for us. That is the hope that we can have today.